Egyptians. Nostradamus and the Lost Book images all may be pointing to a rare galactic alignment due to occur in 2012. If true, the phenomenon could have an Vatican untold effect has on the Earth. Book for hundreds of the years. next drawing in the Lost Book sequence furthers the story. This image has a man holding a sword drawing straight up made and down by Notre Dame with again one of these Mobius strip patterns making an S. If you're standing in a very clear place on a hot summer night uh, and you look up at the sky, you will see that the Milky Way makes an S across the sky. So this is the great alignment with the galaxy. It's going right up through the center of the galaxy, through the center of this S. He's telling us there's a club destroying the tree of life, so he's telling us that there's a great danger afoot when this alignment happens. Our Milky Way galaxy is flat, with arms curving outward, giving it a spiral shape. From the Earth's perspective, when the galactic alignment occurs, it will appear that the sun is rising directly in line with the center of the galaxy. The grim prophecies of Nostradamus that some believe coincide with the timing of this alignment are similarly repeated by an impressive list of ancient cultures. While the specifics from each tradition vary in general, uh, there's a remarkable consistency between all of these. Whether we're talking about the ancient Vedic traditions of, of India, or we're talking about the Egyptian Vedas. traditions, or we're talking knowledge. about the biblical traditions, or the, the Mayan traditions, all of them say that we are going through a great change. All of them say our lives will never be the same again. Cultures from around the world and across this time has been have disguised their before. most extreme prophecies in a variety remember. of ways. One of the most intriguing involves alchemy. Known widely as the pursuit of transforming lead into gold, it is actually a much broader scientific discipline right. that uses its own unique symbols and terminology. It is snake. a way of thinking and communicating that Nostradamus is surely familiar with. Knowledge. Anybody who is as smart as Nostradamus in his time period studied alchemy. There was no science. Modern science owes its entire allegiance to alchemy. Newton was an alchemist who discovered gravity. Einstein was into alchemy. Believe it or not, his wife said that what he would do every night before he went to sleep was he would read ancient books on alchemy. Over the centuries, alchemy is replaced as a mainstream science by chemistry and physics. But its role as a symbolic language and as a philosophy of so spiritual transformation same survives the ages. The alchemist is concentrating his mental and spiritual energy into the base elements and trying to transmute them and pull the spirit out of them. Or possibly just scrying a bowl of water to see the future because that could be the singularity or the miracle that might happen in an experiment that Nostradamus would perform. That water has some kind of in Nostradamus's time, Alchemy remains the primary tank. science of the day. Still, its practitioners ply their trade in secret, hoping to keep its potentially dangerous findings to themselves. It could very well be his experiences in alchemy were one of the reasons why he openly obscured his prophecies so that he would keep all the idiots of every new generation occupied and the initiate could go beyond the code and find something else in the obscurity. Rather than metal, we're talking about the metal of spirit. At the beginning of the 1900s, however, a rogue alchemist known only as Full Canelli publishes a shocking text revealing some of alchemy's secrets and purporting that the legendary Society of the Masons may have used the symbols of alchemy to embed secret messages in historic buildings. Exactly. The Masons are thought to have ultimately given rise to the Brotherhood of Freemasons. Right. While they are primarily a fraternal organization that brings together members with common interests, Freaking some share connection that they are also the keepers of ancient secrets. Yes. 
and they're carrying on a tradition of knowledge that cannot be put into words. It's symbolic knowledge. I like to say that a symbol is worth a thousand pictures. That would help us advance. Fulcanelli believes the Masons, who built many of Europe's Gothic cathedrals, use symbols that have alchemical meaning to disguise messages about the manner and timing of a future disaster. Nick is the Masons, who built many of Europe's Gothic cathedrals. Look at that reptile. Use symbols that have alchemical meaning to disguise messages about the manner and timing of a future disaster. Fulcanelli saw many of the shifts that were happening at the beginning of the 20th century as evidence of the fact that the time period was upon us, that it was going to be very soon. For Fulcanelli, the symbols on the Gothic churches add up to a simple but chilling message. Fulcanelli made the direct correlation between alchemy and something called Chileism, which is the idea that at the end of the world, everything will be made new again. It will be an alchemical transformation of reality. What this meant, in Fulcanelli's terms, was that we are on the cusp of a time in which alchemy is Lean not just scene. an isolated event that happens buried away in the laboratory, but it's a transpersonal event that happens whether you want it to or not. A large like Fulcanelli, scale. Nostradamus foretells a time of violent transformation that seems to be eerily reminiscent of the current environmental challenges facing the world. The end of the wolf, the lion, bull, and the ass. No longer will fall upon them the sweet manna. Century 10, Quatrain 99 is a very serious quatrain. It's a very serious prophecy because he outlines many different animals, not just animals, but also certain food plants that we are dependent upon that could go extinct. If we lose those, uh, we're going to be in serious trouble because what else are we going to rely upon Finish. in terms of, of, of our food? Honeybee pollination accounts for a good third to the half of the crops that we get our greatest nutrition from. If the honeybees disappear, unless we come up with a zillion little honeybee robots immediately, which we're not going to, it's going to lead to crop failure. The honeybee is vanishing because A, of a virus, B, a parasite, C, nobody knows. The same could be said, by the way, for a bat, another one of those unsympathetic creatures that, guess what, eat mosquitoes by the bushel full, thank you very much. So it's this scary confluence of events that all of a sudden these mainstay species, whether we like them or not, they're important to us, are disappearing for reasons that not only we can't prevent, but we can't even understand. You've got the depletion of species that you haven't seen before. You've got extraordinary growing water problems around the world. You've got depletion of fisheries uh, all over. You've got rapid increases in the price of food that you've never seen before. As the food supply shrinks, a lethal chain of events unfolds. It's a known fact that if America stopped exporting food because of the food crisis, immediately 100 nations would go hungry. And that in a year's time, Africa might lose a half a billion people to famine. But this much I know, that where you have oh famine, God. you have plague. Where you cannot feed people properly, they become more susceptible to disease. And when you have disease, where people cannot do the work that they need to raise and transport the food, you have famine. This cycle of disease and deprivation, if unchecked, could lead to the type of instability that can sweep the globe. When you have that, you inevitably, sadly, have wars and governments fall, and the domino effect. That's what I'm most worried about beginning in 2012. If this domino effect is not averted, there could be 